I recently read a promoter of the exclusive use of the King James Version who argued that if anyone has trouble understanding King James English, they can just go to Matthew Henry's commentary for all the explanations they need. I was skeptical. I still am. It's just not the job or the concern of a turn of the 18th century commentator to help turn of the 21st century readers understand turn of the 17th century English words that have either died or changed in the last 400 years. So I checked one of my false friends passages, Romans 5.8, and sure enough, if you know what you're looking for, Henry nails it. If you realize you don't understand the word command, and if you realize that Henry's use of the word command is putting on display his knowledge of 17th century English, you will hear Matthew Henry explain the word to you the same way I have in my false friend's work. So stop. What does commend mean in Romans 5.8 in the King James Version? But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Ask 10 redheaded Christians what that word means, commend, in that context, and I think eight of them will tell you it means demonstrates, or shows. That's almost what it has to mean in a context like this one. Even though we never use the word commend to mean demonstrates or shows today. And those are the words that modern translations tend to choose, demonstrates or shows. Two of the redheads in that group of 10, however, will tell you that demonstrates is not what the King James translators meant when they chose that word. They had the word demonstrateth and the word showeth in their English, and they didn't choose those words. One of those two redheads is me, and the other is Matthew Henry, um, assuming he was a redhead because weren't all British people redheads back in the olden days? I like to think so. Here's what Matthew Henry said. Can you divine the meaning of commendeth in Romans 5, 8, King James Version, just by reading this? Now herein God commended his love, not only proved or evidenced his love, he might have done that at a cheaper rate, but magnified it and made it illustrious. This circumstance did greatly magnify and advance his love, not only put it past dispute, but rendered it the object of the greatest wonder and admiration. Now my creatures shall see that I love them. I will give them such an instance of it as shall be without parallel. Commendeth his love as merchants commend their goods when they would put them off. This commending of his love was in order to the shedding abroad of his love in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. He evinces his love in the most winning, affecting, and endearing way imaginable, while we were yet sinners, implying that we were not to be always sinners. There should be a change wrought, for he died to save us, not in our sins, but from our sins. But we were yet sinners when he died for us. Nay, which is more, we were enemies, not only malefactors, but traitors and rebels, in arms against the government. The worst kind of malefactors, and of all malefactors, the most obnoxious. This is a commendation of love indeed. Justly might he who had thus loved us make it one of the laws of his kingdom that we should love our enemies. This is warm and beautiful and insightful and piquant writing. He might have done it at a cheaper rate. I just love that. It's so wry and precious. I love Henry. I wish all the writers I contract to write for Bible Study Magazine could hand in writing as good as his. Some of them need a little help from editors to get up to that level. But did he help you learn the meaning of the word commendeth in Romans 5.8? I'm going to have to say no, not for most people. Only if you already know what it means will you realize what Henry is doing here. Back in 1611, in a context like this one, the word meant to set off to advantage with added grace or luster. It's what diamond merchants do when they put their gems on black velvet cushions, as I said in Authorized. The Oxford English Dictionary says so. Command is a great word to use here, though, as I say in Authorized, in the closest I come to a negative word about the decisions of the King James translators, it's a touch more eloquent than is strictly required by the Greek. The Greek word just isn't that specific. It just means demonstrates or shows. And Henry demonstrates and shows that he knows all this. I think so anyway. He contrasts command with proved and evidenced. He says that commending is something more. It's magnifying God's love and making it illustrious. We might say lustrous, shining brightly. Henry even uses pretty much exactly the same illustration of what commendeth means that I used and authorized the use and misuse of the King James Bible. I said that commendeth meant showcased, like 
putting a diamond on a black velvet cushion. He says that God commendeth his love as merchants commend their goods when they would put them off. Obviously, put them off meant something different back then than it does now. So, yes, Henry helped here. But I think you'd have to be a pretty sophisticated and astute reader to realize all that's going on. If you don't, you can still get a lot of benefit from what Henry says. But it just kind of sounds like he's illustrating and expanding on the meaning of the passage. When what he's actually doing, I think, in addition to that, is expounding on the meaning of an English word he understood and we today don't. It's a false friend, commendeth. And I think you'd still need to check the Oxford English Dictionary to know all this with certainty. I don't think checking Henry is a substitute for checking the OED, nor do I think checking Henry is a solution to the readability problems in the King James caused by language change. Are you going to hand the plowboy a King James and a six-volume set of Matthew Henry? If you do, I think you will have just made the readability problem worse. No offense, fellow redhead. I can't stop nerding here. King James English, like contemporary English, uses commend in several different senses. It clearly doesn't always mean what it meant in Romans 5.8 in the King James. In Luke 16.8, for example, the King James uses the word in a way that is just the same as we would use the word today. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. The Lord praised the steward in a kind of formal way. We say the same thing today. But I think I found one other place where the King James translators used the word commend to mean set off with added grace or luster. And it's just two chapters before Romans 5.8. But if our righteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? That obsolete sense of command makes perfect sense here. If our unrighteousness puts the righteousness of God on display for all to see and appreciate, why does God take vengeance on us? That's the only other place I could find commend used by the King James translators in the way they used it in Romans 5.8. It takes some real subtle reading skill to notice when an archaic sense of a now current word gets used only twice. Last bit of nerding out. Luke 23.46 in the King James uses commend also, and I've always found the use a bit puzzling, though as often the overall meaning is pretty clear from context. When Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. That word choice has always seemed a bit odd to my English ears. Without even looking at the Greek, I'd expect commit my spirit. And that's just what most modern translations go with. A few others instead choose entrust my spirit. So what did the King James translators mean here when they used the word command? I think they meant sense one in the OED, to give in trust or charge, delivered to one's care or keeping, to commit in trust. And I don't think we use the word this way anymore. I checked, this amateur lexicographer does his homework, and the OED entry hasn't changed since the 1890s. Even then, they gave hints that the sense was dying. They would say formerly in such expressions as, and now, certainly, I don't think we use the word commend to mean commit or entrust, not without helping words. That is, you can say, I commend my great aunt to your care in a very formal letter to a nursing home. But you can't say to your babysitter, I commend my children to you. That would call up a different sense of the word. It would mean you are presenting your children for approval or acceptance to the babysitter. Merriam-Webster still lists this sense that I'm saying is dead, or at least archaic, as their first sense. The New Oxford American Dictionary, correctly I think, makes this the third sense of the word and calls it archaic or formal. Hey, anytime a person listens to this whole nerdy video, a redhead gets its wings.